Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey. This is Edexcel IGC exam series number two. This is factorizing. Okay, let's do it. So to factorize, we've got to find the highest common factor, whether that be numerical or algebraic. In this case, I can see that both of these two terms can be divisible, can be divided by two. So two is the highest common factor, so I take a two outside the bracket. Now, what have I got to times two by to get four C? Well, it's got to be two C. Now, what have I got to times two by to get negative 14? It's got to be minus seven. And voila, that's one mark in the bag. Okay, let's move on. Here, I'm looking numerically, and I know they both go into, or three goes into both of them. And algebraically, they both share a Y but not a y squared because the 15 is only as y to the one. So I can take out a three y. What have I got a times three y by to make six y squared? Well, a two to make six and another y to make y squared. And what have I got a times three y by to make 15 y? That is plus five. Beautiful. Okay, what have we got here? Uh, five is the highest common factor. Y but not just y, not even y squared, but actually y cubed can come out. But not y to the 4, because the term on the right does not have a y to the 4. Okay, what have I got to times 5y cubed to get 15y to the 4? 3 to make 15, and another y to make y to the 4. What have I got to times 5 by to make 20? That's 4. And I need a u in there uh, to, well, for this a u right there. And the y cubed, well, the y cubed is already outside the bracket, so that is good to go. Okay, um, I can see a 2 straight away, and I can see a p, which leaves a 4 to make 8, and another p to make p squared. And a lot of people mess this up. If I've taken out everything from a term, I've divided that whole term by itself, and when you divide anything by itself, you are left with 1. So minus 1 there, minus because there's a minus sign in the middle, and 1 because I've divided the whole of that term by itself, so 1 is left over. Okay, wowza. Well, we've got a lot going on here. Now, first thought I thought was 3. Then I thought, oh, no, 9. 9 could come out. It has to be the highest common factor. You have to factorise fully. We also could have an e to the 3, no. Only an e to the 2. An f to the just f, because there's an f to the 1 there, and that's the highest power that they both share. 9 times 2 makes 18. e squared times e makes e cubed. And f is already there, so that is good. Plus, what have I got times 9 by to make 45? It is 5. e squared is already there, so that's good. We've got an f to the 1, but I need an f to the or, so I've got to times by f to the 3. Because remember, when we times f's or any letters that are the same, powers add. So here, f to the 1 and f to the 3 add to make f to the 4. Beautiful. <sighs> okay, right. Well, this, you've got to be careful with these ones. Very fiddly. 5 is the highest factor. a to the 4 is the highest a. C to the 3 is the highest C, and there is no H, and there is no D that they share, so that's good. 5 times 5 is 25. A to the 4 is good. C needs to make up to 7, so I need 4, and we need D there as well, uh, because that is not outside the bracket, so it must be inside the bracket. 5 times 9 makes 45. A needs to go up to 9. It's already at 4, so I need A to the 5. C cubed is already good, and I need a H as well. And that is good. Okay, they just keep on coming. Let's do it. 5. C. D squared. Open brackets. 2. C needs to go to 3, it's at 1 already, so we need C to the 2. D squared is good, we can move to the next term. We need a 3 to make 15, 
C is good. D squared needs to go to D to the 4, so I need D to the 2 to multiply by that D squared to make D to the 4. Okay. 5. Um, for, oh, whoa, 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 slow down there, slow down. Factorize fully, let's take out all the terms. We need a 5, a B cubed, and a C is the highest C. 3, B squared, C is good, minus 7, B cubed is good, C to the 8 is required to make C to the 9. Lovely. Aha! On to factorising a quadratic. This is a single uh, squared term, so we need to just think about the c term. And when I say c, I mean that any quadratic can be written like this. Um, so the c term is the constant term, which is this one here. And this, we need two numbers to times to make minus 48. And this, the b term, is minus 2. We need them to add to make minus 2. Okay. So, the first thing I can say is that it has to have a y and a y, because it's just a y squared. They have to times to make a negative, but add to make a negative as well. So it can't be, uh, it must be one positive, one negative. That's the only way the two numbers can times to make a negative. The two numbers are going to be, well, if you're not sure, you could always do factor pairs. So 1 and 48, mm, they're not going to make minus 2. 24 and 2, that's not going to make minus 2. Uh, 12 and 4, mm, that's not going to make minus 2. We could have 8 and 6. Now, that is looking promising because that has a gap of 2. So if we make the negative 1, 8, and then the positive 1, 6, they will add to make minus 2. Perfect. That is factorised. Okay, once again, we need to times to make 24 and add to make minus 11. So x and x. Because they're times to make a positive, they must either be both positive or both negative. And because they need to add to make a negative, they must both be negative. Okay, factors 24 are 1 and 24, 2 and 12. Ooh, 2 and 12? No, that's not good. I don't know why I said that. 3 and 8, though, that is very good because 3 and 8, when they're like that, they'll add to make 11. Perfect. Okay, next one. Times to make 12, add to make negative 7 n and n because they're times to make a positive but adding to make a negative they must both be negative factors of 12 are 1 and 12 2 and 6 3 and 4 fits the bill because they will add to make negative 7 perfect okay this one's called the difference of two squares if we have a squared minus b squared we can write it as a minus b a plus b. So you spot this by finding first that two terms are have a difference, so subtraction in the middle, and both terms need to be squared terms, of which these are both squares. Okay, so what do we do to factorize? Well, we take the square root of a squared, which is just a, so that goes in the first slot there. There's a minus and a plus, and then we take the square root of 124, so 144, which is 12. And we're done, that is factorised. Okay, um, same, same one here. Another difference of two squares, because that is a difference. And we have a square and another square, because 9 is square, 4 is square, x squared is square, and y squared is square. So... Open up our double brackets. We can put a minus and a plus in the middle. And first we need to find the square root of 9x squared. Well, that is 3x. So that goes in the first slot. And then we need to find the square root of 4y squared, and that is 2y. And that is factorised. 
Oh, oh, here we go. This is the Mr. Packer method. When we have a x squared, or in this case a y squared, where the, uh, the, the first term is not one, its term is six. This is the best method for doing this. Just watch. So we know that's the A term, that's the B term, that's the C term. We do A times C, which is 6 times minus 5, which is minus 30. And we write that the B term is, well, it's just, it's just minus 1 there because it's just minus Y. Okay, we then do 6Y because the A term is 6. 6Y because the A term is 6, all divided by 6 because the A term is 6. We then need to find those two numbers that times to make minus 30 add to make minus 1. So they are, uh, they must be one positive, one negative to make times to make a negative. And the negative must be bigger because it's going to add to make minus 1. And 6 and 5 fit the bill perfectly. Uh, so they times to make minus 30 and they add to make minus 1. And then all we need to do is just divide one of the brackets by 6. Okay, well, the bracket on the right can be divided perfectly by 6, so that is the one we're going to divide by 6. And there we go. We factorised it. So stress-free. What a method. Big up, Mr. Packer. Okay, this one, again, A times C is 3 times minus 3, which is minus 9. And B is minus 8. Because the A term is 3, we go 3x, 3x, all divided by 3. So those two numbers, times to make minus 9, add to make minus 8. Hmm. One must be a positive, one must be a negative, because they times to make a negative. We've got negative 9 and positive 1, that fits the bill, they add to make minus 8, job done. Okay, I could divide one of the brackets by three, and that one is this one here on the right, and we have factorized. Um, woof, final question, super tricky, but if you're paying attention earlier, we have a difference, and these are most definitely squares, because they are literally squared brackets. So when we have this, we open up a bracket, a double bracket, sorry. We put a plus in the middle of one and a minus in the middle of the other. Doesn't matter which way around. I think previously I did the minus first, but literally doesn't matter. The square root of this left hand bracket, well, it's a square bracket, so the square root is just literally what is inside that bracket, which is 12y, 12x minus y. And over here, what's the square root of that? Well, just take the squared away. It's 4x minus 3y. Over here, uh, again, it's the same thing. 12x minus y. And here is 4x minus 3y. Now, again, this is difference of two squareds um, because we know that a squared minus b squared is a minus b, a plus b, or the other way around. You have to be a tiny bit careful here because when we're taking away this, it is, does need to be in brackets like that. Um, and you know, essentially this one as well, but when you're adding, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so what's this going to give me? Let's look at the left hand bracket first. We've got 12x and a 4x, that makes 16x. And then we've got a minus y and a minus 3y, which makes minus 4y. Over here, what we've got, we've got 12x minus 4x. That makes a total of 8x. And over here, we've got minus y minus minus 3y. So that's minus y minus minus 3y is the same as minus y plus 3y, which is plus 2y. Okay, great. It does say factorize completely, and I can see that there, that inside these brackets there are actually factors. So this one could be divided by four. So I can take a four out of this one, like that. And this one I can take a two out of.
Oops. Like that. So overall, I've taken a four and a two out. So I can call that eight. So I can take eight out altogether, just basically times in the four and the two together and just putting it at the front. And then the two brackets, which don't have any factors in now, looks like this. Oops, see Daisy. <laughs> Careful, there should be a plus there. Beautiful. Okay, that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed that and see you next time. Bye for now.